Judy Garland, who stole our hearts as Dorothy Gale in the 1939 movie The Wizard of Oz. I find it fascinating what makes some art last for decades and why movies and music of today can easily be forgotten a few months later. Unfortunately, Judy was taken advantage of and gave so much to us as an entertainer, she couldn't save herself. On June 22, 1969, Judy was found unresponsive by her husband, locked in the bathroom of their rented London home. She died from a barbiturates overdose at just 47 years old. Judy was buried in Hartsdale, New York, 24 miles north of Manhattan. At the insistence of her children, 48 years later, Garland's remains were moved across the country to a crypt in the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Chris Cornell, the songwriter and vocalist of so many legendary bands like Soundgarden, Audio Slave with members of Rage Against the Machine, and Temple of the Dog featuring members of Pearl Jam. There is always a handful of bands that sound like each other, but with Chris Cornell's unique voice, I can easily say no one sounded quite like him. With a four octave vocal range when he sang, you knew who it was. Chris was unfairly lumped into the grunge Seattle scene by critics, but as music lovers, we all knew he had created a style all his own that no other band could duplicate. On May 18, 2017, Chris Cornell took his own life after a show at the Fox Theater in Detroit. He was 52 years old. Mel Blanc. Nothing reminds me more of my getting ready for school childhood back in the 80s than the man of a thousand voices, as you can see here in the opening credits. Mel, who started his career in radio, became the versatile multi-voice actor who brought to life such cartoon characters as Bugs Bunny, Yosemite Sam, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Sylvester, Woody Woodpecker, and the list goes on. One of my favorite stories is that on January 24th, 1961, Mel had a nearly fatal car accident on Sunset Boulevard, which put him in a coma for two weeks. Mel's son tried desperately to revive him. One day, about 14 days after the accident, one of Mel's neurologists walked into the room and tried something new. He went to Mel's bed and asked, Bugs Bunny, how are you doing today? After two weeks of being unresponsive, he finally responded by saying, What's up, Doc? After a lengthy recovery, he went on to also contribute voices to the Flintstones as Barney Rubble and Dino. Mel died of heart disease and emphysema on July 10, 1989 but the legacy he left behind will live on forever. Johnny Ramone co-founder and guitarist of the punk rock band The Ramones. 
Even with songs that usually only had three or four bar chords in them, it was all in the attitude and presentation of those chords. They actually got the band name from Paul McCartney of all people, because whenever he would check into a hotel, he would use the alias Paul Ramon. The Ramones played their first show at the legendary CBGB's in New York City on August 16, 1974. Kicking open the doors to a punk rock and new wave movement of bands that included the Talking Heads, Blondie, The Police, and Patti Smith, just to name a few. The Ramones were also featured in one of my favorite movies, the 1979 film Rock and Roll High School. I've been to a lot of cemeteries and seen a lot of tombstones in my life, but I can honestly say that Johnny's, a punk rocker from New York, is my favorite stone I've seen so far. Johnny died on September 15, 2004 as a result of prostate cancer. Dee Dee Ramone, the co-founding bassist of the Ramones, is also buried here. Sadly, he died in 2002 of a heroin overdose. The place creeps up.